Hi, I'm Bob Clements, and I'm excited to have you join me on this uh, webcast that we're doing. Uh, this is going to be a part of what we're going to be doing at the GIE Expo uh, this year. Our focus is on parts managers and service managers, and Sarah and I wanted to do some kind of pre-convention work so that you'd have an opportunity when you came in to already have some kind of background and understanding whether you're a service or parts manager on some of the basics. And so as you're in our training this year, uh, you'll come again with a base of knowledge. And then as we are doing our training, we can kind of take you to that next level. This session I want to focus on is probably one of the most important for all the shops out there because it really focuses, focuses around how do you price out jobs. And I know a lot of you have questions and try to struggle understanding the concept of flat rating. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time on that as we go through this session. So the first thing we have to understand is that really the flat rating is a critical part of the whole job. So we've got a, not just flat rating, but pricing the jobs correctly and then utilizing flat, flat rating is an important part of it. And that's really what the job of your, your manager is, is to make sure that as their work is coming into the shop, we're giving customers good estimates, or if we're doing time and material work, we're building it out in the right way uh, to make sure that we're making and producing the kind of revenue that we need to be producing out of our shop. So it's really a, an important part of a service manager's job, or if you're an owner and you're functioning as a service manager too, to really get that pricing down right. The big thing about pricing and making sure your jobs are priced correctly is making sure that your jobs are priced for what we would call a B level or a, a number two tech. And your goal is to make sure that every job that you price out is with 80, within 85 to 100 percent of efficiency on that job. So if I've got a B level or a level two tech on a job, when they get done with that job, I know I priced it correctly because they were within 85 to 100% of what I did. So if there's a three hour job there and a B level tech or a level two tech is doing that job, there's a three hour job. I know I priced the job correctly if that technician got it done in three hours or just a little bit over three hours, which means if you had an A level or a level one tech on it, uh, that technician would probably be 110, 115, maybe 120% efficient on it. So understand that when you're pricing your work out, the key thing is to be pricing it out and pricing it relative to a B level technician. So keep in mind, we have three levels of technicians, level ones or A's. Those are people that are good at diagnostics, uh, repair and replace and service. B-level technicians struggle with diagnostic, but they're good at repair and replace and service. Then we have our level three or C-level techs that are really just what we would call our servicing techs. So when you price a job out, regardless of who's going to work on it, you need to make sure that you're pricing that job out for a B-level, a repair and replace technician. And any A-level or level one technician you have on that job should easily be able to beat the time on that job. The big question is, is the posted labor rate. And I would say that this is probably one of the questions that we get most pushback on as we're talking with, with uh, service managers and, and uh, owners about their labor rate. I find that way too many people are overly concerned about their posted labor rate. And understanding that your posted labor rate is what you're going to charge non-purchasing customers. So if I have a customer that bought a piece of equipment from another dealer, and that dealer's service department doesn't do a good job and they bring it to me to have it serviced, my posted labor rate is going to be what I would charge that person who didn't buy from me, who didn't give me the opportunity to make money on that sale, I'm going to charge them a higher rate or a manufacturer who I'm doing warranty work with because again, they're not what we would call or classify as a purchasing customer. So how do you create it? Well, the easiest way to me is to create it is to get a sense of what the marketplace will bear for a labor rate. And the easiest way to do that is not to call around other dealers that you compete with because they're calling you and we end up with this circle of nobody's moving their labor rates up because everybody's calling the other person. You need to be the price leader on this and let people follow you. Our rule of thumb is, is go to your local Ford, Chevy, Honda, Toyota dealer, whoever's closest to you that's a major car dealer, find out what their labor rate is, and that gives you a sense of kind of the peak, the top of the marketplace, and then I tell all of my dealers, you can be 10 to 15% below that, and you're going to be fine in what you're doing. So again, your labor rate is not you calling other dealers that you compete against saying, hey, Bob, what's your labor rate, and hey, Bill, and all of a sudden, you guys all end up at $65 or $70 an hour, where the market that you're in, right, is in that $95, $85, $95, $100, $105 an hour range. Drives me crazy when I see guys 
that are that are building their labor rate around just what other people in their area are doing. Somebody has to take the lead on it, and let's let that you be you. And keep in mind again that the labor rate applies. Your posted labor rate is for people who are non-purchasing customers. If you've been in my workshops before, heard me at the GIE before, you know we've talked about a preferred customer program, and I'll talk about that in just a little bit. But this is not what you charge the people that buy equipment from you. This is what you charge people who do not buy the equipment from you. The preferred customer program, as you heard me just mention a moment ago, is where we give the customers that did buy from us an advantage, a discount on either time or labor, and a preferred place in line. So let's say that your posted labor rate is, I don't know, let's say it's $90 an hour. Uh, that's a pretty common labor rate for wherever you're at, whether you're in outdoor power, power sports, whatever. It's kind of at the lower end in some areas, but let's just use $90 an hour there. So that's $90 is what we're gonna charge people who didn't purchase from us, non-purchasing customer. Our preferred customer rate, we're gonna give a discount of either time or labor, and a preferential or a preferred place in line. So if I've got a customer that comes in that bought from me and my posted labor rate is $90 an hour, I might do a $10 an hour discount back to 80, which is where you had it before you moved it to 90. So I might give them a $10 an hour discount and they get a preferred place in line. So they don't get in front of other people that bought from me in line, but if I've got somebody in line ready to go into my shop and, and they didn't buy it from me, and you come in and you're a preferred customer, meaning that you simply bought it from me, you would always go in front of the customer that didn't buy from me. I struggle sometimes wondering why as owners and as service managers, we treat people that didn't buy from us like we treat people that did buy from us. I don't understand that, and it's not what you should do. So you wanna make sure you have a preferred customer rate, and then you wanna communicate that and market that as a part of what you're doing. So that preferred customer rate is something that you should have in your showroom, and you should have your salespeople talking about customers say, well, why should I spend an extra $150 to buy from you? You say, well, you buy from us, we may be a little bit higher, but ultimately over the life of your machine, it's gonna be less because you become a preferred customer. And they go, well, what does that mean? It says, well, for the life of that machine, you get a $10 an hour discount on our labor and you always get a preferred place in line. Now you do not get ahead of other preferred customers, but anytime we're working on people's equipment that didn't buy from us, and by the way, that's about 50% of the equipment, you would always get in front of those people regardless of when you came in in line. So that preferred customer program is a great program. Your customers love it. And I'm telling you, it'll help you improve your margins on your whole goods. So flat rating. Let's talk about flat rating because this is something that I have a lot of people really struggling with. We're working with the United Equipment Dealers Association and the EDA, Equipment Dealers Association. We're working on building out a flat rating system for outdoor power and compact utility, kind of the real lifestyle customer ag uh, tractor. So that's something we're working on. And at the GIE this year, you want to stop by the Equipment Dealers Association booth and talk to them about that and if it, how it interfaces with your software. But really what flat rating is, is we're going to go through and we're going to look at jobs that we do a lot of. And we're going to say, guys, on the average, that job takes three hours. OK, so let's say we're doing a uh, oh, let's just say that we're, we're talking about compact utility tractors and we're going to do a clutch. The average clutch on a compact utility tractor, we're looking at probably 14 hours as a flat rate for that job. So that's what we would do. Now, if we got it done in 13 hours, we're still going to charge 14. And if it took, took us 15 hours, we're still going to charge 14. That's what flat rating is. We're trying to price jobs out so that it's fair to the customer and it's fair to us. So that's what flat rating really is. Now, you have to understand that in the business that you're in, whether you're in outdoor power or compact utility or sports vehicles, there's different levels, different stages of flat rating. So flat rating, again, is we're going to take a job that we've done several times and we're going to put a time on that. And normally what I do is, again, I take the, the, the kind of the, low, the high to mid averages, blend those together, add a little bit more time on it, and then you've got a good flat rate you can work off of. And then just test it to see if it's working for you. And again, as I said before, you know, a B-level technician should be, should be able to be at 100% on that flat rate. The thing we have to keep in mind, though, flat rating is based upon equipment being in excellent to good condition. So in the world of flat rating, there are three different levels of equipment condition. We have excellent to good, good to fair, and fair to poor. So excellent to good is equipment that's just out of manufacturer's warranty. And so let's use, let's use three hours as a flat rate time on a, 
I don't know, a piece of equipment. And so that would be equipment. We would say that equipment, it's three hours to do this job, X, Y, or Z job. And, and we, we use three hours because that equipment is relatively new. It just, it's just out of warranty. It doesn't have any corrosion. Nobody's been on the bolts with the wrong kind of tools. Uh, everything should come apart as we plan. It should be a relatively simple three hour repair. As that equipment gets older or abused, then the conditions start to change on it. So we have excellent to good. Our second level of condition is good to fair. Now this is a piece of equipment now that's got some age on it. It's got rust corrosion. Some of the shoulders on the bolts have uh, been rounded off because somebody used vice grips instead of the right socket or the right wrench on them. And then in that particular case, we would take what our flat rate was, let's say it was three hours, and we might add another 40% to that three hours or maybe 30%. You have to kind of decide what your range is on that. So maybe that three hours now, if we added another 30%, that may move us into that four hour range instead of a three hour range because the equipment now has got some use, abuse, some corrosion on it, and it may take me longer to take it apart just because of rust and things like that. So I add time to my flat rate based upon equipment condition. And the final equipment condition is that uh, fair to poor condition. And now this is where I may be looking at using acetylene as one of my tools of choice on it. And then you might add another 20 or 30% to your good to fair rate to get that rate up there. So a job that where equipment is in good condition was at three hours, we may, by the time it gets to level number three, that might be a four and a half hour to a five hour job just because of the abuse and the neglect of the machine. So when you talk about flat rating, some people say, well, this is what we have to charge. No, flat rating is for equipment that's in near new condition, excellent to good condition. You add additional times to make up for that equipment condition as you're doing it from that standpoint. So that's a little bit about flat rating. Time and material work, because I have a lot of my shops do, as a matter of fact, this is the thing I try to get my shops to understand. Most of my shops do time and material work. And time and material is basically, I don't have an idea what this is going to be, so we're going to start the clock, and then we're going to end the clock, and however much time we have on it, we're going to charge you for that, and then whatever parts and things like that we use, we're going to charge you for that too. So there's nothing wrong with doing time and material work, and some of the work that you're going to do, you can't flat rate. You just aren't going to know till you tear it apart what you're gonna need on it. So we do do time and material work, but it shouldn't represent more than 25 to 30% of all the jobs you've got coming in. Because here's the, here's the downside on time and material. I find that shops that do time and material, uh, let's, I've got my very best tech on it who's gone through training and they've got $40,000 worth of tools they invested in and they're quick and they're, they're quick and they're efficient and they do a great job on it and they do that job and maybe if I, and, and so let's say it's, it's four hours and they did that job. And so we're going to charge four hours for their time. Yet if they were doing on flat rating, I would have got maybe five or five and a half hours for that exact same amount of time. So that's the downside to me of time and material. You've got your best techs, you're spending money on them to go to training, they're investing in tools and they get faster and you charge customers less for the work that you would have charged them for than if that person had no training at all. I tell people, if you're going to do time and material training, don't spend any time training your people. Let them be slow and, and make them use hand tools with no uh, air or uh, cordless impact wrenches. So the thing with time and material is we do use it in our shop some, but what we recommend you do is look at a technician's average efficiency when they're flat rating and then use that as a multiplier on time and material. So let's say I'm your technician and I'm a level one or a level tech and i'm 120 percent efficient all the time on flat rate jobs and now i've got a five hour job that's a time and material job well you would add another 20 percent on that five hours that would take that up to six hours and now i would charge that customer six hours for that job instead of five because had that same technician been on a flat rate job they would have produced six hours for me on that so i want you to understand how to use time and material from that standpoint and then understand this is another question that comes up is internal labor rates. And again, there's a lot of different theories on this. Uh, my theory is, is your internal rate should be about 20% less than your preferred customer rate. So if you have a preferred customer rate of $80, then I would make my internal rate 20% less than my preferred customer rate. Because the reality of it is on internal rates, uh, as an owner, you're taking money out of pocket A and you're putting over in pocket B. Because see, in our shops, we don't track uh, the, the success of a shop by the dollars it produces. We track the success of a shop and the success of a service manager by the recovery rate, which has nothing to do with dollars. So, you know, there are times, especially with you guys that are working in ag, in the ag world with rural lifestyle compact utility tractors, we may have a tractor that comes in for on a trade and maybe you're at $90 an hour on and then it needs 
maybe eight hours worth of work, you know, so that's another seven or eight hundred dollars we're going to add to the cost of that tractor. And it may move you out of the market on being able to sell that used tractor quickly, where if we were charging sixty dollars an hour on it, it might put us right in that sweet spot for it. So I tell people again, I'm not a big fan of having your internal rate and your posted labor rate the same. I think we're playing with monopoly money at that point. And I want to make sure that if I've got used equipment, I want to have it priced right, even as I do the repairs, put it back in the market, get it sold so I can get my money and cash back out of it. So my personal preference is, is I normally would take your preferred customer rate, reduce that by another 20%. And that was what we, that is what we would use then at that point for a, a internal labor rate. So we talked about how to price our jobs out correctly, understanding flat rate. I know this is kind of a quick little session, but that's really what the point of this is. I want you guys to make sure that you join Sarah and I, Sarah and I with the folks at the Equipment Dealers Association at the GIE Plus Expo this year on October 16th, 17th, and 18th. If you're an owner watching this, give me your parts managers, give me your sales manager, let me work with them, let Sarah and I work with them, let us help you move them in a new direction. You do, I think you're gonna find that the GIE Expo is gonna be a great event for you this year. We are looking forward to seeing you there.